Good morning, everybody, and welcome to St. John's on this uh, lovely sunny morning, a bit chilly, but it's just lovely to see the sunshine. Can I just have a show of hands, please, for those people that would like votives lit for them, please? Okay, lovely. Thank you very much. Everything you need to know is in the newsletter. Quite a bumper bundle today. Um, we've got about six pages there, but lots of information to keep you up to date with what's going on in the parish. Um, also, hopefully we've got some plans in there that will actually come to fruition for social events that are coming up. Um, tomorrow is a very special evening. We are having the licensing for Father Brendan at seven o'clock. Sadly, even though we have been meeting in church all the time that we've been able to hold services, um, we have been instructed by the diocese that following government instructions that the licensing may, must be via Zoom. And uh, we sent out the invitation to the Zoom licensing service on Friday and we hope as many of you as possible will be able to tune in tomorrow evening. Um, it will be a wonderful occasion. And um, Father Brendan has asked that Nick, his church warden, and myself be with him in church, although you will be at home um, viewing. We hope you enjoy the service. It's a, a new beginning for St. John's um, at a time when we need to move forward and develop our outreach. Um, we have got great plans. Um, the committees are working really well at the moment and uh, we pray for the next three years um, to support Father Brendan in his ministry. Thank you.
we gather together in the joy of the resurrection. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Cry, cry out with... Alleluia! So my friends, this is the octave day of Easter day, uh, another celebration, another feast. We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, his promise of the gift of eternal life. And as we think of our ultimate destiny to be part of the worship of God in heaven, we pray that we may be worthy to offer this worship. So let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's sit and listen to the Scriptures. The first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, beginning at verse 32. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands and, or houses sold them and brought the proceedings of what they had sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, How good and pleasant it is to live together in unity. 
how good and pleasant it is to live together in unity. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when the family lives together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robes. How good, how good and it pleasant is, it is, is to, to live together in, in unity. unity. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life for evermore. How, How good, good and pleasant, and pleasant it, is it is to, to live, live together, together in, in unity. unity. Our second reading is taken from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now by this we may be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. Whoever says, I have come to know him, but does not obey his commandments is a liar. And in such a person, the truth does not exist. But whoever obeys his word, truly in this person, the love of God has reached perfection. By this, we may be sure that we are in him. Whoever says I abide in him ought to walk just as he walked. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me shall never die. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord.
It was evening on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he'd said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he'd said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hands in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Somewhere between fear and faith is where we find ourselves in the Gospel today. Immediately after the resurrection of our Lord, fear was most certainly in control. St Mark, whose gospel is the most ancient, tells us that the women ran away from the empty tomb, literally scared out of their wits, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. In today's gospel, John tells us the disciples had hidden themselves away in the room for fear of the Jews, for fear of persecution and revenge, for fear of their lives. They are fixed, still closed in, petrified. And today Thomas shows himself a prisoner of his fear that what the others had told him was not the case, that Christ had not been raised, as they said, and stuck in his fear, he needs reassurance. We can hardly blame him. It's pretty hard believing a bowl full of impossible things before breakfast. The human capacity for fear is readily exploited. Horror films play on it, and the psychological thriller is a box office success. Fear cripples us. It hems us in. Fear makes us self-enclosed, self-conscious. It prevents us functioning as we should. 
here destroys communities as it feeds into suspicion and mistrust and misunderstanding to produce a volatile cocktail that can erupt at any moment. Fear has physical manifestations too. The adrenaline fear produces increases the heart rate and makes our mouths go dry. We talk of being so frightened that we jump out of our skins, that our hair stands on end or even turns white. Mine did long ago. We say we were SHIT scared. Not heard that in the pulpit before. Or that we were petrified, turned to stone. I have a terrible fear of heights. And once, in the clear story of Ely Cathedral, I literally was petrified. I could not move. So fear affects our whole being. It has the power to turn us into stone. With this in mind, it's extraordinary that the disciples and the women were able to break through their fear and set the world alight. That's why we're here. The fact that they did it. In the course of the earlier dialogue with the disciples, Jesus had tried to allay their fears as he breathed on them the warmth of the breath of life. But that breath of life Get on with the job of witnessing to God's mighty work. Perfect love, he had said, casts out fear. So, what disciples was faith, the gift of faith, faith that transforms everything and a sense of his presence that would abide in eternity. Because the treatment for fear is security, isn't it? Knowing where you are and who you are with. And this is a very important reason to believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That gift of faith did the trick. It did indeed cast out their fear. Not only did it produce the sort of community described in the Acts of the Apostles where all were united in heart and soul, sharing their possessions with great joy. It also sent the infant church out on fire with Pentecost zeal to convert the world to the Jesus way of living. And for a while it worked. Where fear had prevented them from doing anything, now faith was enriching and enhancing everything in their lives. The same should be true for us also. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. That's you and me. We are meant to discover great joy and satisfaction in our faith and thus the motivation to share it and celebrate it with others. Faith is the overwhelming liberates us where fear destroys us. It seems to me that this new faith of the disciples has four characteristics. They are these, a concern for justice and equality for the underdog in our community. Worship, which is vigorous and full of zeal. 
the way people treat one another and care for one another. A new attitude to money, which was a resource to be shared, to be used in the life of the church to proclaim the risen one to the world. Brothers and sisters, that faith and the challenge of it is before us today. Those four characteristics are a pretty good measure for any parish development plan. A concern for justice and equality. Worship that is vigorous and full of zeal. The way we treat one another. A new attitude to money. A resource to be shared to be used in the life of the church to proclaim the risen one to the world. If I need a manifesto, that's it. Let us proclaim the faith we share. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us now pray to our Heavenly Father. Let us pray to the Father, whose Son's resurrection brings life and hope to us all. Fill us all, O God, with the faith, the joy, the hope the risen Christ brought to his disciples. Encourage and sustain us as we too go out into a world so much in need of that message. And under the leadership of our bishops and priests, especially at this time as we prepare to welcome the ministry of Father Brendan. 
And as Thomas opened his mind and heart to that wonderful truth, may all who have yet to know and acknowledge it, all who have rejected it, receive it into their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So much of the world Christ came to save still forsakes his message of peace and love. And we pray for all suffering under cruel regimes and ask for your help and strength to all bringing comfort and relief to them and for that inspiration to all working to end conflicts, personal and national. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The sick and the sad all need you now as ever. We remember before you those suffering from any illness and all who are known to us. And among those suffering bereavement, we number our own royal family at the loss of our Prince Consort. The nation joins with them in recalling his lifetime of loyalty and service. The resurrection truth of eternal joy uplifts us as we remember before you, Prince Philip, and also those known to us, but whom we see no more, including the recently departed and this, at the, our, our anniversary that fall at this time, Frederick Denison Morris, Barry Wharton, Raymond Colston, George Surridge, Wilfred Joseph Penny, priest. The resurrection truth of eternal joy uplifts us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our prayer. Joy unbounded filled the hearts of the disciples as the resurrection news spread. May we all join them in praise and thanksgiving this day and every day. Merciful Father, accept these prayers, prayers for the for sake, sake of your Son, our Saviour, Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and he said to them, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the risen Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's acknowledge the presence of one another. Peace be with you. Peace. And please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and this wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself and shares in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen high priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, almighty and eternal God, and in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in women and men the image of your glory. He has placed us once more in paradise and opened to us the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice, with praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, 
the Virgin Mother of God, of John the Evangelist, our patron, of apostles and martyrs and all the saints. May praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Doubt no longer, but believe. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Lord God, our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit come down upon you and dwell deep within you this day and forevermore. Amen. We say together, Joy to thee, O Queen of Heaven, Alleluia. He whom thou wast meet to bear, Alleluia as he promised, hath arisen. Alleluia. Pour for us to God thy prayer. Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary. Alleluia. For the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has brought joy to the whole world, grant that aided by the prayers of his blessed mother, we may come to the joy of everlasting life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.